Welcome back. A brand new Fox poll shows Ted Cruz edging ahead of Donald Trump in Iowa with Senator Marco Rubio sitting in third place. But the latest Wall Street Journal poll shows Trump and Rubio losing head to head against Hillary Clinton, while Senator Marco Rubio and Dr. Ben Carson have a leg up on the Democratic front runner. Republican presidential candidate Dr. Ben Carson joins me right now. Uh, it, good to see you, sir. Thanks very much for joining us, Dr. Carson. Thank you. Pleasure. Let me, let me get your, t your take on these polls. Uh, we, we, of course, have breaking news on, on uh, ISIS as well, which we'll get to. But uh, ha what do you need to do, Dr. Carson, to lift these numbers? Well, I think the key thing is to continue to be myself, not try to be somebody else. Continue to, uh, to tell the truth and speak about the issues that are important to the people, recognizing that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, poll numbers are volatile, particularly as you approach the, uh, the first set of primaries. And uh, I think one of the things that will help me tremendously be because of the events that occurred in Paris and in San Bernardino uh, and a hit piece uh, by the New York Times, people came to believe that I know nothing about foreign policy. But I think uh, as time goes on and people actually listen to what I'm saying, they'll recognize that that's simply not the case. So, Dr. Carson, let me, let me ask you about that, because this morning we have breaking news. A woman has been stabbed in Paris just uh, moments ago. This is breaking. A kindergarten teacher uh, was stabbed by a man claiming to be from the Islamic State, and he said to her, this is a warning. Uh, and uh, apparently uh, it's non-threatening. But let's say you are in that seat uh, as the commander-in-chief and, and you are uh, winning the, the general election. What will you do to defeat ISIS? Well, you have to recognize that uh, these attacks, these long, long wolf attacks, as well as coordinated attacks abroad, will continue to increase uh, because they have established their caliphate, they have uh, given themselves legitimacy, and now they can go on to the next phase. What I would do is concentrate on taking that legitimacy away from them. Uh, take away their caliphate, take away their sources of income. ISIS, as you probably know, is the wealthiest terrorist organization. Uh, and that's because of the oil revenues. Don't allow them to have that. Shut off all of their monetary channels so that they don't have the ability to pay people because they go after the disaffected numbers, not only in this country but all over the world. If they can't pay them, it makes it much more difficult for them. We need to attack their command and control centers, Raqqa, uh, Mosul, cut off the passageways between them, isolate them, put them on the run, keep them running all the time. Uh, and that doesn't mean that we don't need to be taking care of the situation at home as well. We need to be monitoring the Internet. We need to engage in cyber warfare against them. We need to uh, be talking to the imams and the clerics about helping to identify uh, who the radicals are, get the, the moderate Muslims involved in that, and help them to recognize that if they're able to identify these people, uh, th then they become one of our allies rather than somebody ab about whom we're very suspicious. Uh, these these right. are the kind of things that will make a difference. Th these all sound like very good ideas, but from a practical standpoint, sir, what does that mean? Are, 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 do you think that we need, for example, boots on the ground uh, to support the airstrikes that have been going on? Do you believe the airstrikes have been effective? Well, you look at Sinjar a few weeks ago. You know, ISIS had taken that city. And uh, what happened is the Kurds, in conjunction with our special forces people, uh, cut off all the supply routes. That softened the city. And then when they went in, again, with our special op support and air support, it was possible to take that city. That's a, that's a model that works extremely well and one that we should be using in other places. So, In terms you, of how many boots on the ground yeah. that we need, I think we need, I, I think we need to be talking with our military experts, giving them the mission, and then asking them, what do you need to accomplish that mission, and then being certain that we're going to supply them with that. Yeah, I mean, we, we've been speaking to various generals who've talked about anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20,000 troops on the ground, and, and including U.S. Uh, troops on the ground, as well as uh, our Middle East uh, allies in the fight. Would you agree with that? Well, w w what we need to recognize, you know, we, we have this phobia about the concept of boots on the ground. We need to recognize that if we don't win this war, 
there will be boots on the ground over here, but they won't be our boots, and they'll be on our necks, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a good point. Look, uh, as far as the cyber uh, part of this, you know, we know now that one of the killers in San Bernardino, Malik, uh, had been praising uh, jihad and saying that she loves jihad on Facebook uh, for, for some time before actually uh, committing the, uh, the horrific uh, fatalities in San Bernardino. What do we need to do on a cyber uh, standpoint, from a cyber standpoint, in your view, to get a better hold and, and, and better command of the encrypted communication that is going on right now? Uh, well, we, I think, need to be uh, working with some of our private sector who are extremely good with the encryption and with deciphering encrypted things, uh, sort of a public-private partnership, recognizing that we're all in the same boat. But, but that's not and, happening. Uh, we we're, need to, yeah, that's not happening. I mean, the the, the uh, well, telecom and the technology companies are, are trying to push back to, uh, to protect their users' data. Yeah, well, I, I, just because it's not happening doesn't mean that it can't happen. Right. I think we need to be involved in those negotiations. We need to help them to understand that there's a bigger issue here that we're dealing with. At the same time, I'm very uh, interested in making sure that we maintain people's privacy. Uh, we have, you know, a, a whole host of FISA rules and courts. They can get what they need if they have a suspicion, an adequate suspicion about someone, that's not an adequate excuse. D